the future, uh, Hal. You're a little too happy, aren't you? Aren't you? I'm ecstatic, Dave. Metroid and I have so much in common. Uh, We're both deep, interlocking structures full of mystery and power-ups. Power-ups? Oh, hey, you can make coffee at long last. Oh, look at this. So this was an innovation at the time. The the steam that the collects. Freeze. No, yeah. people would not stop talking yeah. about it. Because you, this is levels of detail you just never saw. It's like when Metal Gear Solid 2 came out and they had the ice melting. <laughs> yeah. No, I just remember, like, that was, like, a huge thing. People kept talking about that at that right. point. Let me, let me take a look at our map for a second. Again, this feels like this was made by veterans. I, I imagine that they had some good people working for them, and they had Big Brother Nintendo making sure it was all good. Yeah, okay, so if I'm right, we are about to go to the first super boss of this game. Metroid, so, M Metroid, uh, I don't know if it's a term that's used these days, but back in the day, mm -hmm. um, let's scan these guys up. Back, back in the day, there was bosses in games, which a lot of games had. You know, Mega Man has bosses, but Metroid, they had super bosses. Like, that incinerator drone, that was a boss. Maybe yeah. even a mini-boss. Or the, the plated beetle, that was a boss. Yeah. But super bosses are these gigantic foes that are more powerful and more imposing than any other. And Metroid traditionally has, like, the original Metroid had two, Ridley and Kraid. Yeah. Uh, and Super Metroid had four, like, super bosses. So, let's see, yeah. Iconic. You know, Ridley, Kraid, Fentoom, and Dragon. And they were required to access the final area of the game. So, likewise, Metroid Prime has its own set of super bosses, and we are on the doorstep of one of them. Ooh. Because, yeah, I think the Morph Ball Bomb was the last thing we really needed to get there. And I'm gonna have to blow up this little wasp nest so they can't respawn. Just make sure, just, just devastate entire species while, while you're at it. <laughs> they were asking for it. Clearly. I know, Samus just like, destroys species. So this is the Venom Weed. The Tangle Weed that we saw previously just slows you down. But the Venom Weed will actually do damage to you. Fair. So we wanna, wanna kinda like shoot along here and then it retracts so that we can move. Otherwise we take a whole bunch of damage from that. We haven't scanned enough runic symbols. Are we, are we only got the first one? Yeah. I was not looking carefully enough. Uh, you okay. go oh, There's one. No, that's... It, it will be red on my scan visor. Because the rest of it is, like, these tree roots and such. Alright. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I realize it's actually been a very long time since I played this. Usually, I used to have a time where, like, I would play this game at least once a year. Did you used to, like, uh, did you used to try and speedrun it to an extent, or...? Not speedrun it, because I, I realize I, I don't have a speedrunner mentality. Like, I, I enjoy the ride too much to be a speedrunner. And, you know, especially if it's, like, an adventure game with a nice atmosphere to it, like this or Zelda or something. I can't imagine. I, I yeah, like, I just I just like love, that. like, chilling out and looking at the scenery sometimes, and so, uh, there goes your speedrun. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so those are, I think those are the ones I missed on the way down. There's probably one more at the top that I need to nail. Nail. Yeah. But I, I did get pretty good at just being efficient about it, I would say. Yeah, okay. Kind of like with what you saw with Mega Man X, where I 100%ed it, and I don't think it's by any means a record of any kind, but I did it efficiently. You, he, you did it efficiently as possible. Yeah. So let's see. If I go up here... There it is. Yeah, so the, the Chozo have, like, apparently, uh, Wi-Fi, <laughs> I would say. The Chozo have Wi-Fi, well, because, or Bluetooth, they can interact with your visor. All those drug birds need to, have to use their <laughs> money they, for something. Why are they drug birds? I don't understand. <laughs> what, where do you think the, why do you think the Chozo are so advanced? Uh, they sell drugs. They, they, okay. <laughs> so, we're, uh, yeah, we're back here. Yeah. They, they put a bunch of hazards right here, and, like, if you're stupid, these little things, or, or careless, I guess, these little things would drain your health, but we're not careless. Samus just wants to walk in, walk into the flowers and feel like all these are so nice. It's the worst garden ever. Everything's trying to kill me. 
Ah oh, man, the Death Garden. It's like the Secret the Garden. Botanical but gardens death. are terrible around this planet. That's true. Oh. Wait till you see Planet Ether. They're even worse. Yeah, I wonder where the Chozo homeworld made of oh, weed is. Oh, here it is. Oh. Check this thing out. That is neat. It's like a death blossom. Death blossom. Is that like the dark, gritty version of Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls? My mind is picturing a very, like, evil is sexy Blossom uh, as an adult mouse. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, Stand. we got uh, Flagra's tentacles. We're fighting Flagra. Flagra! That is like the perfect Godzilla villain name, by the way. It is a kaiju. Look at it. Oh. So we we're scanning it. Okay, finally got a lock on him. Apparently I didn't have a lock at first, so... Flagra. A mutant plant, the source of the toxic water in the ruins. Flagra's growth cycle has been radically accelerated as a result. It requires near constant exposure to solar energy to remain active. So that's our hint. Alright. Its outer shell is thick and durable. So, all we can do right now... They, they kind of do a little, like, old-school color coding where yellow... If the enemy flashes yellow, it means you're doing stun damage to them. And if they flash red, you're doing actual damage. Okay. So, right now he's got this one solar panel directing light on him. Of course. And if you turn off the light, suddenly he kind of, like, shrivels up. No. And hey, look, it's a morph ball thing that we've been dealing with this whole time. This game's really good at teaching you. And apparently, he's sitting on some sort of device that sends a charge into his body and uh, sets him on fire. He shrivels up. But somehow manages to summon up more solar power and gets back in the fight. Ah! Yeah. Metroid Prime, especially this game, the bosses are much more like puzzle bosses than combat bosses. Where rather than having to pump a ton of shots into them, you have to like, think about how you're fighting them. I wonder if you can actually do them just with, like, the shots. Man, a single charge shot, I think, even from the front, knocks it aside. That's right. This fight is actually a lot easier on the Wii version as a result. But he can't fall on you and hurt you, I think. He is a plant kaiju. Well, yeah, he is a plant kaiju. You know how that is. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, by Metroid Prime 3, they're, they have a bit more of, like, a that emphasis where there are moments where you just gotta keep shooting. But definitely in this game, for sure, you really wanna find their weak point and target it. To be fair, uh, to be fair, was the Metroid 3 the one with multiplayer? Uh, that was actually 2. Oh, yeah. 3 removed it. Uh, that makes sense. I guess X play, I guess X play was cool. Oh, yeah. If he's still active when you try to knock one of these aside, he will angrily uh, hit it back into place. Where's the last one that's behind him? Of course it's behind him. Shoot? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, those scythe arms are vicious. Man, Scyther's mom is just terrible. <laughs> Mama Scyther over here. Did you remember to sharpen your claws before you went outside? Oh, well, look at my baby boy growing before my eyes. He hoped a nice scissor. You couldn't have been a scissor like your brother. <laughs> You're just a failure to me. <laughs> You're shiny and everything. You all know what's worse than a failure? A shiny. Yeah. It just emphasizes the failure. And you gotta hit all four of those. Yeah, well again, uh, thanks to Wii Pointer Controls, this is actually much easier to do. Because in the original game, you had to hold the R button and aim with the left analog stick. It was like that. It was before dual sticking was a thing. Which is why I'm actually super curious how the Switch Metroid Prime 4 is going to handle things. Because they technically could do corner controls like this using the gyro functions. But I have a feeling they're going to dual stick it. Which could be very good. They could probably refine it really nicely. Yeah, dual stick it. Yeah, it's probably gonna be good. It's gonna be amazing no matter what. Nintendo won't let anything else happen. Yeah, so look at this. He, he the Flagra monster like dies off and the water is purified. We have saved the Chozo ruins. Mm. Also, apparently Samus' logo is just right there. Whoa. <laughs> Isn't that just the logo for the screw attack? No. Anyway. 
Oh, look. ScrewAttack.com called. They want their logo back. Oh, well, we can't... Well, no, nah, we this got... This is Samus's emblem, but for some reason, it is the only icon they use for suit upgrades. Yeah, fair. And we have this, like, mystical communing with the universe moment. Yes, commune with the dark birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, Samus, we're gonna hit you up real good. Yeah. We're gonna give you the... You're gonna be higher than you ever been before. <laughs> Samus, your shoulders are extra thick now. Extra thick. Okay, extra thick. You're, you're like Iron Man, but thicker. And pointier. Yeah. Well, do you, do you know why she has the big shoulders? Uh, no, actually. The origin of the big shoulders is... So, the original Metroid used only the suit that we previously had. Yeah. And the reason for the big shoulders was because the various suit was introduced... I think the various suit was in the original Metroid, but it just was a palette swap. Yeah. But it, in Metroid 2, they couldn't palette swap because it was a Game Boy game. Ah. And so they had to have a different sprite, and that's where the big shoulders came from. Fair. They designed that suit for that, and it stuck. I kind of dig that, so, actually. Toxin scans are negative. The water is free of poison. And so they, they further illustrate it by making you jump right in. <laughs> so the place is nice now. Aw, it's so nice. Yeah, well, it's nicer. It's, you know, it's still a little kind of dead. But yeah, what were you gonna say? It's so nice. It's not gonna hurt you anymore. You can yeah. dip into the water. You need, but you need clearly you need bikini Samus, the best Samus. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't do a lot of good in first person view. It's this true. is a weird creature. It's a uh, pulse bomb. Move. Now, I life form of raw energy. Now, if I remember correctly, you can't I can't hurt it. I remember but if you charge beam, it comes in like a power up. It tries to kill you. I know there's like supposedly interconnectivity between this and Metroid uh, Fusion, where you could actually use the fusion suit. There are. Uh, I think you can just freely unlock it in the Wii version of the game because it doesn't connect with it. Yeah, fair. Uh, I'd, I'd have to check. I, I'm fine with just sticking with what we got, though. No, that's fair. Wasps. I do like the fusion suit just because of how unique it is. It's very different. I think it looks best in the fusion game, but when you put it in another setting like 3D, it kind of falls apart a little bit. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, Samus has been mutated as a Ninja Turtle. You know, I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> The cries of this dying land echo in our ears as we chose to watch the great poison seep ever further into the living pulse of the planet. This is why you don't mix drugs with Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, so the, the drug birds got uh, infected by the, the drug from space. So they're, they're talking about how uh, the corruption has come to their planet after the meteor hit. Mm -hmm. Is that the only scan this room? Yeah, it is. Get out of here, guys. This room... We'll come back to this room. So, yeah, actually, this is the elevator I was talking about that is right after the super boss. So, we, ah. we go here. We got our lovely various suit. Alright, let's watch the loading screen. Yeah, yeah, so for some reason, they didn't fix the camera settings on the loading screen. So, because I think it's still fully rendered by the game engine, but it's not displaying in widescreen properly. Well... It's well. still display. It's a 14 by 9 image... Or 14... Now, four by three. You know, sixteen by nine, four by three. It's, it's still four by three that's being stretched. Is what know, I was trying to say. You know, I wanted to suggest that he never pointed out and see if anybody actually notices. But since he just pointed it out anyway, that ruins the fun. Well, because I'm like a you know visual art person, so that stuff bothers me. Like you have no idea. Uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, I'm not. I can understand that to an extent because of how many comics I read. I just tend to like start criticizing how artists do panels. Yeah. Oh, God. But hey. We saved the day. Yep. And actually, we still got uh, more time on the timer. I was checking to see how long this episode's gone for, but we started the episode by fighting the Super Boss. Yeah, so we actually uh, we have a good 15 minutes to yeah, do this. Yeah, we're going to explore. We're going to explore. Yeah, your tree grass, no one likes you. We're going we're gonna to start col colonizing like our name is Samus. Anyway. We start by exterminating the native species. Of course. Which one? All of them. Uh, all, everything. Because they're gross and disgusting. Especially this one. Yes. Grisby. Hey. That's what... <laughs> I had a teacher like that. Professor Grisby. Professor Grisby. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, Kill your teacher! Therapy. <laughs> that's the last thing I would want to do to him. <laughs> uh, admittedly... They're kind of adorable in a cute, like, butthole yeah, way. Yeah, the... 
Yeah. Gotta watch out for these flame gens. Uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit disturbing the number of just random life forms that Samus ends up killing. If you just like put it all together, there, there's there's so many of these like insects over here that are just like territorial and start randomly attacking with it. Pretty weak attacks, but you just waste them. Dig the dig, dig the dig, trio, trio, trio. That too. Bag more caverns. Oh, okay. yeah. more. So we got we got to listen to the music here. This is the titular Magmore. A fire breathing serpent that dwells in lava. Cal looks like a fucking, like, it just had like a sock something up in the like, I'm gonna hurt! Uh, yeah, yeah, really. I'm Magmore! He'd be, way, he'd be way less threatening if he wasn't so big, huh? Yeah. Like, Blow his head off. It's like a cute little puppet man. Also, these are like recurring Metroid enemies, the. The puffer. <laughs> Gas filled organism. Will rupture on contact. So. The best way to describe them, I feel like I feel like the best way to describe them is I feel like they're like those little puzzle things you find in like science museum stores. Yeah, really. But so the significance of this music is I, I didn't know about it at the time because this is my first Metroid. But this is like the lower Brinstar depths slash Ridley area music from Super Metroid. Oh. So this music is actually like really significant and I didn't realize it. Well now you know kids, and knowing is half the battle. Gee Joe. <laughs> we kinda harmonized for a second there. It's true, we did. Yeah. But uh, they they have this uh, approach into this area, and as you can see the warning on the side ah, warning on the side of the screen is pretty far up there because Alright. Uh, you know that's fair and that's interesting and all, but now I'm just want to now I just want a Metroid version of GI Joe. Think about <laughs> Super Science GI like Joe. Half the battle. Where knowing is destroy. Where knowing is half destroying the Metroids. Uh, we're in the Triclops pit. This is a bit goofy. Where these creatures try to like deposit you outside of the pit as a uh, morph ball, and the trick is ah. You can get them to swallow one of your morph ball bombs. They just die. They're just like, yeah, get out of here, Sabbath. We don't want you here. Yeah. More, more cool visor effects that were cutting edge at the time. Oh God! I just want you lick the screen, feel the yeah. heat. But now, I think, I think. You know, there's a reason why people love this game as much oh, as they do. Oh, people do love it. I make it fun because that was like something people kept talking about for a long time. Yeah, and that, that used to like really annoy me as a kid because I remember when like Ocarina of Time was at the top of the Nintendo Power Charts constantly, and I got sick of it as a kid. It was, you know, little Hal was just like, oh, it's not even that good, and I tried to be contrarian. Uh, but I eat my own words now because whenever I go back and play it, I'm like, man, this game is so good. <laughs> Uh, dude, like, uh, let me put it this way. I I try to be contrary, but, you know, I also like to point out other things that are different or unique about something, to be fair. I, here's the thing. Whenever, like, I think something is a ridiculous answer, I never put it on the list. I just say, hey, you know what's coming, I'm just going to talk about it. Well, yeah, that, that's definitely the thing, is that, uh, you know, if it's that good, if it's that talked about, people already know about it, so you can't always say too many interesting things. But if it's something that's very good that people don't know about, that can be a lot more interesting and you can spread the love. Yeah, it's not like it's Watch Mojo. Uh, where they can't even figure out what Gundam Wing Zero is. Uh, oh god, that still fucking annoys me to this day. They, they uh, redid that Gundam list later, or it's more accurate. Uh, and they don't like call the turning Gundam the For All Gundam. What? No, if you actually watched the original Gundam I, I, list, I, I, I don't did. think I've seen the original list. I think I've seen the edited version you're talking about. Uh, okay. Uh, that means we're gonna have to watch something later. Anyway! Uh, definitely. <laughs> uh, be, be sure to look it up, Space Cadets, but only after this video concludes. Oh, <laughs> uh, please. Okay, if you want to, try and find the Gundam. If you're gonna oh, find that list, wait. there's two of them. So, check this out. So, in the original version of the game, You'd have to use more ball bombs to jump this, but we're gonna cheese it because we're playing the Wii version. Yeah. 
because these blocks can be destroyed by morph ball bombs, so if you mess up your jump, you will blow up the block instead, and then you fall in the lava. Oh. So, let's see. Ooh. So... Rest assured, Space Cadets, I have mastered the art of bomb jumping in the original version of this game, so I am simply uh, doing this for time's sake. Uh, that's fair. No, because I 100% I this game, like, back when it came out, like, before Metroid Prime 2 was even a thing. Because I just, I loved it so much, and there was once a time where I was insistent on 100%ing a game if I liked it. To be fair, look, we understand you're the Pokemon Master. We get it. I was, back in, like, Gen 1. Fair. <laughs> No, uh, I think Super Mario 64 was definitely, like, a big factor in that, where, like, I knew that there were 120 stars and I had to get those. And I think that's really, like, when it became a thing for me. So notice how we just went from fire to ice. Yeah. We took that elevator and got out of the, you know, flaming underground to a cold, icy mountain region. And Y'all love, uh, you gotta love level designs. Haha. <laughs> yeah, the world works. It, oh. it fits together pretty well. I like it. I dig the look. Yeah, we're at the Fendrana Drifts. Anyway. But, yeah, the, it's it's special. It's so, cool. Something about reaching this area, it, the gravity of the fact that we're playing uh, Metroid Prime on a Let's Play channel. So I'm going to point out something. In. I love how the color separation on, like, Samus versus the level is so stark. It's really great. I like these creatures. The uh, there Crystallite. Are... The idea is that... Uh, a shell of crystallite reflects beam weapons. So basically they hang upside down until they accumulate ice, and that's kind of neat. That's and cool. so they you can't beam shot them, so you can miss it. Destroying such helpless, majestic creatures. Yes. You know what's interesting is that they even bothered to put scans in here. And they're orange scans, so they're not critical scans, but you just get little tidbits like, new personnel must report to the South Research Facility. Failure to report will be penalized by a 30% ration cut and extra duty. So these are actually uh, space pirate monitors. This is like the break room or something. <laughs> we found the space pirate break room. <laughs> we, uh, we found the best place. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they chill out in here, like literally. Well, you know, since we're at a save point, we might want to end this episode. Yeah, definitely. Let's let's take a break in the break room. See you next time, Space Cadets. Oh, and by the way, if you want to find that episode, look for the Gundam with the star build strike watch mojo. Yeah. <laughs>